in awareness of the time here, uh, we also wanted to jump into talking about EVM. Uh, and Greg is going to do a bit of a demo for us. Uh, hopefully, your uh, your screen works here, Greg, um, for this yeah, demo. Let's let's try. Let's try. Um, I'll start with this beautiful documentation that we have. Thank you, Raj, for putting this together so quickly. Um, this is our EVM tutorial. It tells uh, about really basic things about EVM. Uh, you won't, if you read this, you won't become a, a Web three engineer. But uh, for people new to Ethereum or EVM, this would be really, really helpful. And uh, I'll start right here at EVM with uh, uh, with MetaMask. Uh, that's not with MetaMask because we have we have a uh, faucet page here. So let's see um, what what we can do here. Uh, <clears throat> so like I said, it, it works with MetaMask. Here's my MetaMask. And here is, uh, it's connected to BitTensor network. It's um, it's um, uh, EVM testnet that we're running for a while. Uh, and I, I have here some small balance. Let's request, uh, request some tau, some test tau from our faucet. So it's, uh, oof. This price list. Okay, it doesn't work. Anyway, uh, demos. Demos. Uh, I knew it's not. Uh, I'm gonna have problem, but that's why I have a uh, have some balance on this. Look at that. Uh, Look at that <laughs> tau in MetaMask. That looks that looks nice. That's wow. tau. Yeah, that's uh, that could be real tau. And uh, I have another account. Let me see. Let uh, let me just transfer some. Um, that's. I'm pretty sure this is gonna work. I'm gonna transfer. All right, about half tau to my other account and see what happens. So I have the window here opened. Um, let me see. I need I need another window like that so that I don't lose my uh, state display. And this is polka.apps UI. This is uh, connecting to substrate interface. And um, I think I was too late to open it, but I, if I click a few blocks, uh, back, uh, yeah, I see the balance transfer happened. It's uh, in Ethereum transaction. And uh, let's see how my balances look now. Now, this balance decreased, and the balance on this account increased. I had 0 0.36. Now I have 0 0.86. So that works. That's, uh, that's great. It works, but it's not very, very exciting because, um, well, we have so many, so many Ethereum chains or even scaling solutions or rollups, whatever. All of them uh, just uh, uh, don't do much more than just uh, just scale in Ethereum. What we can do here is we can connect uh, this EVM machine through precompiles to BitTensor functions. And one of these features is staking. Um, I don't need this guy. I, I need this documentation. Yeah. Um, so one of these features is staking. We can stake with with a precompile and give uh, if I look at the stake we can uh, here's my hot and cold key I, I can increase the stake using my uh, using my metamask interface let's let's see how this happens uh, this uh, this document actually guides me through this uh, and uh, here is my stake and precompile ABI if somebody doesn't know what ABI is, this document explains it, but I can I can really quickly explain. It's um, it's an interface that uh, that describes how to interact with smart contracts. I'm going to use this this environment. It's called Remix. Uh, this is an integrated development environment for uh, for Ethereum smart contracts. Uh, but I can connect it to any other network. And like for example, I will, I'm going to connect it to my MetaMask, which is connected to um, to Subtensor uh, network, which means my my uh, Remix is going to be connected to Meta, uh, to Subtensor EVM testnet. Uh, that's my account that I'm going to use. And a really simple way to interact with the contract, I can copy and paste, I already did this before, um, I can copy and paste my uh, ABI into Remix ID editor, and then I can say this is, this, this is the contract that I want to interact with at this address, which means it will uh, create a smart contract and create this nice UI interface for me to interact with this smart contract precompile. Here I need a hotkey and I need some tau to send. So I already have my tau here. Uh, it's 0 0.86. I'm going to transfer, let's say I'm going to transfer uh, half tau, which is 5 and 17 zeros. 
It's uh, how we encode native currency in on in EVM. It's always uh, 18 decimals. Uh, and I need a hotkey. Uh, this is a uh, public key for the hotkey that I'm going to stake to. Because this uh, this testnet already has a Fini state uh, as of a couple of weeks ago, so we have uh, Open Tensor Foundation hotkey on it. So that's the hotkey. And um, in order to convert it to this format, bytes 32, I need to extract public key of it. It's done through ss58.org. I'm going to just decode the, the uh, substrate address, and it's going to give me public key. Here's the public key. It's 32 bytes. And I'm copying it here. So now if there, everything is ready to, to run this transaction. So let's see what happens. Just before I run it, here is my cold key address. I'm going to explain in a moment how I converted my MetaMask address into this guy. So these are two same addresses, actually. And I see uh, in Apps UI, I see this is, it has approximately 1.1 tau stake to OTF hotkey. Let's run the transaction and see what happens. I still don't know if it's going to work. Looks like it worked. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, let's switch right here. And maybe here, I'm going to see if I ran. Yeah, it ran. I see the stake was added. Here's my hold key. And Ethereum transaction executed successfully. Let's see what's hap uh, what happens here. You see, I have 1.6 tau stake now. I didn't even touch BTQE or even, or None of the uh, SS58 address uh, you know, private keys I completely operated through MetaMask. So the idea here is to provide this functionality to and open uh, open this functionality to smart contracts, to Ethereum smart contracts. Uh, we will be able very soon to stake, uh, unstake, and do uh, all kinds of things with the uh, smart contracts. Everything that flexibility of smart contracts allows us to do like staking uh, pools or maybe liquid staking and whatnot. As well as cross-stream bridging and potentially even locality pools on top of the uh, sturdy. Yes. I, I can yes. <laughs> its interaction with uh, dynamic tau will be something else to see. Very interesting. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, there's, you know, we, we, we wondered for a while if we should have EVM compatibility um, and like it opens up um, some Pandora's boxes. Uh, we imagine that there'll be some really interesting DeFi and potentially annoying DeFi things that happen on the chain. But I think leaning into this idea that we, we should have more freedom on the BitTensor network um, as just a matter of principle uh, and, and ripping the Band-Aid off and going towards uh, allowing people to to build novel applications and add uh, liquidity across the ecosystem could only be positive for people, right? So we, we probably will see all sorts of interesting things occur, right? Uh, staking across different validators and depending on APY of those validators and subnets, um, the direct allocation of child keys, the quick allocation of child keys. We're going to add a lot of more, a lot more liquidity and movement into BitTensor from this pallet that. Uh, we will have to monitor closely, um, but I think in the end, the steady state will be something that's very positive for for BitTensor. Uh, you know, on top of that, like I, I I know that a number of a number sub a number of subnets that are already thinking about ways of actually directly monetizing uh, the commodities um, and and do transactional flow uh, through their subnets. Um, so that we can actually integrate, you know, direct transactions for, say, a, an inference request on something like subnet four or nineteen, uh, you could build that with a smart contract in a way that you can't do on uh, on BitTensor as it is built today, which is really interesting. And and we might see a whole market of um, different digital commodities being traded uh, on BitTensor now that we have this pool uh, available to people to to use, and. Um, that might drive uh, if, if everything is 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 again like in, in measured uh, using the using the foundational unit of tau, and we are paying for gas. We can even drive um, demand for for tau. Uh, you know, aside from the regular demand to to have ownership of subnets, uh, just through the need for gas, like uh, which is a more of a, a common primitive in in the in the entire space. So it's it's very interesting, Greg. Like you're 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 unleashing a beast. Uh, it's very exciting. Well done. Um, I mean, f number one, I really hope that this allows for cross-chain bridging for the first time on BitTensor in a, in, a, in a really trustless way. 
Um, but also I'm really um, looking forward to seeing what other people build and, and, and have fun with over the next little while. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Um, and are, are there any questions from the audience for, for Sturdy, for, for Greg, uh, for myself, for Fish, for, for Gary, anyone on the stage? Does anyone want to come on the stage and ask questions um, uh, to, to any of those participants? Now is the time. Just let me know. Put your hand up and, and you can jump on. Um, perhaps, Greg, you want to explain uh, how to use the EVM pellet, where, where it is. Like, it's not on mainnet today, um, but it, it is uh, available to use on the EVM testnet. Yes, exactly. It's not, uh, it's not on uh, mainnet yet. Uh, it's on its own dedicated testnet, which we refer to in documentation. So the documents will go uh, guide you through how to connect to this, uh, whether you need, you need to, uh, you, whether you're a developer or just a user to uh, even want to try it. It explains how to connect with MetaMask or how to configure um, Hardhead. For example, it's going to stay in this state for a while. Maybe we'll uh, deploy it to the testnet, uh, to the larger testnet fairly soon. But um, I think, yeah, Raj just posted this in a chat so you can open documents and see how to interact with this palette. But generally, yes, they're generally it's just um, EVM uh, in Frontier palettes uh, that uh, but we, we, yeah, we had to fork them to handle the decimals correctly, just generally increase, improve the security of Frontier. But they are not much different from, what, for example, Moonbeam does on, uh, on, based on Substrate or uh, some other networks that already in, uh, used the, the Frontier and EVM palettes. Uh I have a question about the Frontier implementation. Actually, the Frontier uh, does not, is not supported anymore, officially. So uh, is there any plan to maintain the uh, current uh, Frontier implementation to follow the Ethereum yellow white paper? Because the recently, uh, Ethereum trying to improve several proposals, trying to improve several protocols right now. But it uh, looks like the Frontier is outdated to follow them. Is there any plan? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. always been outdated, but uh, I see Parity, at least the, for, uh, the fork that Parity supports, it's been updated like we have. Uh, well, it was a key from the Nucleus team who made a PR to update it to Polkadot 1.16, but it's mm -hmm. been on Polkadot 1.11 just before that, so it was not outdated for too long. Also, some other community projects support uh, maintain Frontier, so we're not alone here if we decide to, but we will certainly have to uh, to maintain it for at least a while until they uh, maybe ac accept our changes upstream, um, whoever they are. But uh, <clears throat> uh, for now, yes, we this is kind of a mixed approach. Uh, we'll be both maintaining our fork and maybe looking at how the other forks are supported and maintained. Okay. So I th I I'd love to hear about the next step of the front end implementation. For example, the account abstraction, because the account abstraction is so crucial part for DeFi protocols and onboard so many years twenty tokens at the EVM parts. Uh, is there any plan to implement them or so? Um, are you talking about some some particular ERC, uh, EIPs or? Yeah 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 account abstraction. Um. Not at this moment, but um, so to be honest, I uh, I haven't we haven't planned that that far away yet. Frontier, well, um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's a common problem for the whole ecosystem. I'm, uh, we'll see where where it goes because, um, like for example, e Moonbeam will have the same issue exactly. Okay. So I, I hope this will be some kind of a uh, joint effort, uh, not uh, necessarily done by every individual project who supports uh, supports Frontier fork. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you, Greg. All right. We are shot. I mean, we're, it's going to be very exciting. Um, thank you so much, Greg. Uh, thank you so much, Sam. Uh, and uh, have fun, everyone. Take care. Have a good night. Thank Woo. you. Ciao. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.